Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B Tomcat and we're looking at using the AL APX72 IFF interrogator. In regards to the IFF, I've already shown the usage of it in the Org9 BVR radar video that I did, but that is a 90 minute long video, and so I thought you guys might want just a five minute video showing IFF. So it's all super simple, we're gonna head back to the uh, Rio seat. Okay, so first of all, we'll look at the controls as usual. So adjust controls, Rio, axis controls, we want the HCU left and right, up and down on the joystick. We'll also need half action to bring up the cursor and full action to lock the target. Okay, so first of all, a bit of information and then we'll go and give it a go. The AN APX72 IFF interrogator is integrated into the Org9 operation. The interrogator antenna itself is located on the Org9 antenna gimbal platform, so it's a separate radar on the Org9's antenna. An IFF system works by sending out an interrogation pulse and then listening for returns from cooperating transponders. In addition to the unencrypted civilian mode, the APX-72 is capable of interrogating in the encrypted military mode 4. This ensures that targets replying to mode 4 interrogations are indeed friendly. The APX-72 can be used in search radar modes and STT radar modes. So that's search and lock. To enable interrogation, the IFF is depressed and held on the DDD panel, which then activates the interrogator for as long as the button is held for up to 10 seconds. When the button is pressed and IFF signals are received, the IFF returns are then overlaid on the normal Org9 radar returns on the DDD. A friendly target will be indicated with two bars, one above and one below the normal radar return. As the APX-72 is essentially a separate radar apart from the Org9, the IFF can sometimes also detect targets that were not detected by the Org9. In this case, the IFF return will not have a radar echo inside it. In a search mode, the bar is overlaid on each target that's replying and in STT over the STT target. Additionally, if the STT target is hooked on the TID, the DDD will switch from normal range display to a plus or minus 10 nautical mile display to enable display of multiple returns in case of closely grouped targets. So that's the spiel. Now let's get on with it. So we're gonna try a post Doppler search. First of all, you see we've got TWS auto. What we've got outside is us heading west, uh, friendly, uh, sorry, a hostile, a hostile, a friendly, and a friendly. So we're gonna go to the DDD. What we're gonna first do is turn our HSC to radar for DDD control there. And we're gonna start interrogating these guys here. So first thing we're gonna do is press and hold the interrogate button there. And what we can see is that the left guy is shown as a friendly because it's got the double bars. The next guy is hostile because it hasn't returned a signal. The next guy is friendly and the right guy is hostile. Note also that when in a post Doppler search like we've got here, it changes the up axis of the DDD screen from closure rate to distance. So it's now showing distance. And if I turn the interrogator button off, we'll let go of it. You can see it's no longer showing distance in this axis, it's now showing closure rate again, and they're all closing at pretty much the same rate. So the next thing to show is a PDSTT, a post Doppler track. So we're gonna unpause, we're gonna half action on the HEU stick. We're gonna full action on that guy there. And we've got him locked. Next, we're gonna interrogate. And it's a little hard to see, but you can see him being interrogated in the middle there, and he is indeed a double bar again. Okay, let's let go of that. And unlock back to uh, track cross scan. Half action, and then let's go and lock what we think is a bad guy. That guy there. Interrogate. And he, it's hard to see underneath the cross, but he's a single return. He's not a double line above and below. Next, we're going to do a pulse search. Okay, pulse search. And of course, because it's a pulse search, this axis is already distance in this case. I'm going to interrogate. And you can see we've got the same thing. It's a bit harder to read. In fact, let's just clean that up a little bit. Oh, let's turn the erase down. See if we can get a better see. There we go. Okay, that's much better. So what we can see with the Fendi is that it's got the normal Org9 signal in the, mid in the middle there. And the friend or foe interrogator is showing this line above and below. And a hostile that's not returning anything on the interrogator is just the normal Org9 signal here. Okay, next we're going to have a pulse STT lock. So we're gonna unpause. Half action. Full action. And interrogate. And we can see in this case, of course, he's got the bar above and below. And 
and we're going to back to search and lock the bad guy, which is down here. Interrog oops, interrogate. And he's just got the org nine return, not the double bar from the interrogator. So that shows that. The only thing else uh, otherwise I'd like to show is that interrogating a guy on the DDD will not automatically update it here on the TID. It will not up update the track automatically as a friend, so we have to do that manually. So here's our tracks, just going to let them populate. Okay, so we've got that guy and that guy that we found are friendlies from the DDD here. So what we're going to do is Taser HCU to TID. Uh, yeah, TID control. We're going to get him. We're going to... Uh, target data we're gonna make him friendly and this guy here make him friendly and that's it so we've shown interrogating in the four different uh, kind of lock modes PD search PD STT P search and P STT and how to update it on the TID that's all I want to show I hope that helps and see you later